tomb shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. And when Jesus' family heard it, they went out to seize him, for people were saying, He is beside himself. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. And he called to them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then, indeed, he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit has never, have, never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, He is an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. And a crowd who was sitting about him and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those who sat about him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You be seated. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful that you are always with us and that there is no place or time in our lives where you are absent. Help us to remember that when the times seem to overwhelm us and we struggle and the world seems against us. Help us to remember of your ongoing love and care and presence. So we do not give up and despair, but rather find hope in you. Now gather us around your word. Help us to hear it, and in hearing it, help us to live. We ask and pray all these things in your name. Amen. Friends, grace and peace to you today from God our Father, through our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I had my 55th high school reunion last night. I'm still adjusting to that number, 55. Um, I don't feel like I'm 55 years older, but the mirror tells me differently. But it was a fun night. And you go to those reunions, and when you're younger, you're all busy with kids and jobs and everything, and you get to your 55th high school reunion, and you kind of get there, and you begin to wonder yourself, well, I'm here, but why did everybody else send their grandparents to the reunion? And then you realize you're a grandparent, too. It is a fun time. You get to talk with old classmates and get to meet their spouses and catch up on what's happened in the last five years since we got together. And there are some great joys and enjoyments of the night, and there are some sadnesses. As we drove yesterday, Jackie and I were trying to remember the number of classmates I'd lost in the past five years, and I thought it was three. It turned out to be ten. I was a bit shocked by that, but we are getting older. And of course, as we visited, the first visits were just friendly and happy, talking about kids and grandkids and uh, most of them talking about retirement and some of us not. And that was a lot of fun. But after a while, and I suppose chiefly because I'm a pastor, a lot of people started telling me things that were more, more troubling or deeper than just the formalities. People want to tell their story. And I listened to a lot of stories last night, a lot of them very good and happy, but some of people who've had struggles, sorrows, and griefs in their lives. And of course, that's a human reality. Who among us hasn't had a sorrow or a grief in their lives? Is there anybody who hasn't felt like the psalmist? 
Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Every one of us has been at that point where we cry out to God because we can't take it anymore. Or it's gotten too heavy to carry. Or we wonder if God is there at all. Or if he is, that he's even paying attention. And that's a hard place to be. Because people get to that place. People struggle in that place. And it is a human reality that even though we have many blessings in this life, we are all faced with challenges that we couldn't have imagined when we were young. And now our part, for some of us, sealing every moment of every day. And I heard a lot of those stories. Stories of hopes and dreams that didn't quite come true, hopes of plans that didn't work out, or tragedies of any number of things that people were carrying with them. And in those times, they're looking for a word that gives them hope. That there is more to life than just getting through it, having some successes and then failures and defeats, and then finally going down into death. That, of course, is one of the realities that we were thinking about last night, even if we didn't talk about it, thinking that 10 of our classmates had died in the last five years and ain't none of us getting any younger. And we wonder who will be missing at the next reunion in five years' time. And so it's appropriate to ask. But it's also appropriate and important that we listen to what St. Paul is saying in our reading today. He says, we don't lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And you might say to yourself in the midst of crisis and triumph, I don't know if I can get there. I don't know if I can bear it. But that's where we in Christ have hope. Because hope clings to the one who was crucified and was raised from the dead. Hope clings to Jesus, who bore in himself the sin and the death of the whole world, and in his dying and rising has set us free from the eternal power of sin and death. Hope is born of the one who is willing to suffer for us on the cross, so that when you and I cry out to God, O oh Lord, hear my voice out of the depths I have cried to you, we begin to trust that there is someone actually listening. That the 23rd Psalm is true, that even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. There is no place, there is no time, there is no darkness in this life where God is absent. We may feel the absence, we may think he is not there, our faith may be hanging on by its fingernails like mine is some days, but it's not essential as to how much faith I can cling to. It's essential that the one who gives me faith is there and is there in all he has promised to be. He's there in the word that we have heard today and the promises of scripture. He's there in the holy sacraments that the Lord gives us in our baptism, which we can remind ourselves of each and every day, as Luther often did when he was concerned and overwhelmed and despairing. But he would say to himself, but I am baptized. I am baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. And even this depression and this sorrow and this grief is not enough to overwhelm Christ. We can have hope in the one who has died and been raised for us, we can cling to him, trust in him, believe in him. So that as St. Paul says, even though this outer nature, this human shell, this body is failing and wasting away, which it's going to do because that's what happens to people, we have hope in the one who raises the dead and who has promised us that in the resurrection, death will be no more, sin will be no more, Sorrow will be no more. Those things won't even be a memory. And all we will know is the joy of Christ. We're not there yet. We're still living in this side of the resurrection. 
And we know that there are sorrows to be lived. We've lived through some of them. We know that there are troubled times yet to come. We all know that at some point in time, our last day will arrive and we shall die. But in hope and in confidence and in faith, we trust that the one who was raised from the dead, who himself confronted sin, death, and the power of the devil, whose resurrection has become my resurrection, into which I was baptized, in which we live, that I can face even the darkness of death and have hope that the one who raised Jesus from the dead will raise me from the dead. And we will arrive in the kingdom someday and we shall look around at all that God has proposed and done throughout the history of the universe. And we will see the overwhelming love of God in Jesus Christ and we will say to ourselves, of course, how could it have been any other way? I see the beauty of it, the wonder of it, the mercy of it. And I thank God that he was with me in even the darkest, loneliest places of my life and left, kept me in faith, holding on to him when all else failed. Trust in the Lord. In the bright sunny days and in the dark valleys, have hope in his promises, for he does not fail. Amen.